Hey, math students. Uh, today, let's, uh, let's use the trigonometric identities that we just learned to, um, to simplify some expressions, okay? Uh, and uh, let me just show you what I'm talking about. Here, let's look at this first problem that we get. First problem says we have the cosine of uh, pi over 2. Here, let me write it up here. The cosine of pi over 2 minus theta divided by the cosine of negative theta. Okay? So, I want to try to simplify this. Well, my trigonometric identities, well, they taught me a few things. And one of the things they taught me is that the cosine of pi over 2 minus theta, well, that's just the sine of theta. That's one of my identities. And the cosine of negative theta, I know that cosine is an even function, so that means the cosine of negative theta is just the same thing as the cosine of theta. And this, sine divided by cosine, I know a better name for that. That's the tangent. So this is just the tangent of theta. All right, well, number one didn't prove to be all that challenging. Let's take a look at number two now. What does number two tell us? Number two tells us cosine of theta times the cotangent of theta times the cosecant of theta plus one is something. Now, what is it? Okay, so when I see things like this, I think to myself, oh man, let me just, uh, let me get everything in terms of sines and cosines, and that makes it a little simpler for my old brain. So cosine, well, that's just the cosine. Cotangent is the cosine divided by the sine. And the cosecant is one divided by the sine. Okay, so I have the sine of theta, and I'm just going to put this over 1 so I can have a bunch of fractions here. So the cosine of theta over 1 times cosine of theta over sine of theta times 1 over the sine of theta. And what I see here is I have the cosine squared of theta, that's cosine times cosine, divided by the sine squared of theta, that's the sine times sine, plus 1. Cosine squared over sine squared, well, let's see, cosine... The cosine of theta divided by the sine of theta is the cotangent of theta. And if they're both squared, that means it's the cotangent squared of theta plus 1. And I've seen that somewhere. That's one of my, that's one of my Pythagorean identities. And the cotangent squared plus 1, I remember what that is. That's the cosecant squared of theta. And that's about as far as I can go. Okay, so number two had a little more going on than number one. Let's take a look at number three now. <clears throat> we have one plus the sine of theta minus pi over two times one minus the sine of theta minus pi over two. Okay, so first off, I have 1 plus something times 1 minus something. Uh, I know what that means. 1 plus a times 1 minus a is 1 squared minus a squared, which is 1 minus a squared. So this is going to be 1 minus the sine squared of theta minus pi over 2. Okay? So I got that. And hold it. Uh, 1 minus the sine squared of something? I know that the sine squared of any angle plus the cosine squared of any angle equals 1. So what that means is 1 minus the sine squared of an angle. Well, that's just the cosine squared of that same angle. All right. Now to figure out what is the cosine of theta minus pi over 2. Okay, well, I know what the cosine of pi over 2 minus theta is. That's the sine. That's one of my, uh, uh, that's one of my co-function identities. Um, but what about theta minus pi over 2? Well, the thing to, to think about here is theta minus pi over 2 is just negative pi over 2 minus theta. Think about it. If you distribute that negative, you get negative pi over 2 plus theta, which is the same thing as theta minus pi over 2. 
So that means this is the cosine squared of negative pi over 2 minus theta. And remember, cosine is an even function. So that means the cosine of negative theta is the same thing as the cosine of theta. So this is just the cosine squared of pi over 2 minus theta. And now I know what the cosine, I know what the cosine of pi over 2 minus theta is. It's the sine of theta. So that means this whole thing turns out to be the sine squared of theta. Okay? That's one way to do it. And that's a perfectly fine way to do it. I'm going to, I'm going to look at this though, and I'm going to see, could I have done this a different way? At the very beginning, could I have said, what is the sine of theta minus pi over 2? Okay, well, the sine of theta minus pi over 2 is the sine of negative pi over 2 minus theta, right? And uh, sine function is an odd function, which means the sine of negative x is the negative sine of x. So that means this is going to be the negative sine of pi over 2 minus theta. And the negative sine of pi over 2 minus theta is the negative cosine of theta. So that tells me that this up here is 1 plus the negative cosine of theta times 1 minus the negative cosine of theta. And this is like saying 1 minus cosine of theta times 1 plus cosine of theta. And again, if I have 1 minus a times 1 plus a difference of squares, that's 1 minus a squared. So this is 1 minus the cosine squared of theta, which just turns out to be the sine squared of theta. So either way I do it, I end up with the answer here being the sine squared of theta. That was kind of fun. Okay. One more. Number four, we have the sine of x over 1 minus the cosine of x. Well, this one looks pretty simple, doesn't it? Um, deceptively so, because the more I look at this, the more I think, I'm not sure what I'm supposed to do. Uh, how do I simplify that? Here's the trick. Actually, I'm going to show you this trick, and then I'll show you an alternate trick, which also works. Let's multiply this times the sine of, I said theta, I meant x, the sine of x over the sine of x. Okay? Now, why would I do such a thing? The reason I would do such a thing is that I have a sine here and I have a cosine. It's going to be easier to simplify things if I can get them just expressed in sines or just expressed in cosines. And if I multiply sine times sine, that's sine squared. And as we all know, sine squared is the same thing as 1 minus cosine squared. So let's try that. This is going to be the sine squared of x over the 1 minus the cosine of x times the sine of x. And like I just said, that equals 1 minus the cosine squared of x over uh, 1 minus the cosine of x times the sine of x. Now, again, the difference of squares is going to rear its head a lot here, okay? 1 squared minus something else squared. This is just like saying 1 plus the cosine of x times 1 minus the cosine of x over 1 minus the cosine of x times the sine of x. And I know what that is, okay? I can... Uh, 1 minus cosine of x over 1 minus cosine of x is just 1. So this is going to equal 1 plus the cosine of x over the sine of x, which is 1. I'm just going to split this into two different fractions, which is 1 over the sine of x plus cosine of x over the sine of x. And 1 over sine of x, I believe that is also known as the cosecant of x. And the cosine of x divided by the sine of x is also known as the cotangent of x, and that is about as far as we're going to get. This one ended up being a little, uh, little more challenging than it originally looked. Okay, now I told you I was going to show you two possible little tricks that you could do there. Uh, 
Okay, the first one would be to multiply this fraction by sine of x over sine of x, which is what we did. The other thing that we might do here is to say, again, we're going to think about how the difference of squares, we see that a lot. I have 1 minus the cosine of x. Let me multiply this times 1 plus the cosine of x times 1 plus the cosine of x. And what I get is the sine of x times 1 plus the cosine of x over 1 minus cosine of x times 1 plus cosine of x is going to be 1 minus the cosine squared. Okay? What is 1 minus cosine squared? 1 minus cosine squared is the sine squared. So this is the sine of x over 1 plus the cosine of x over the sine squared of x. And now you see what's going on. We have sine over sine squared. We can just uh, take out a sine over sine, and we get 1 plus the cosine of x over the sine of x. And that equals 1 over the sine of x plus the cosine of x over the sine of x. And we've already done this part before. That equals the cosecant of x plus the cotangent of x. Pretty cool, huh? Okay, hope this gives you an idea of how we can use these uh, trigonometric identities to simplify our expressions. Uh, hope this helps. See you at the next video. Bye-bye.